right. Today on the Entire Life Summit, I am pleased to introduce David and Dana Hagstrom. David and Dana, tell us how you got started as coaches and where you are now being entrepreneurs. Tell us what that's like. Well, let me start out as uh, our journey into being entrepreneurs, and then we'll talk about our switch to coaching. Okay, but, awesome. Um, it's great to be here. So thank you for having is, us. Yes. It is. Um, I've been a pastor for 35 years. Mm -hmm. And at the height of my career, I was serving in a huge church as an executive pastor doing long range planning, strategic planning and coaching staff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at age 58, I was downsized. I ended up in a small town congregation where I just didn't fit at all. And Dana and I hung on and did ministry there for several years. But finally, I remember one night when I was looking at our pension figures and saying, oh, my goodness, we're going to need to work another six to eight years before we can retire. Oh, and I, I shared that with Dana and then said sort of flippantly, unless we just retire now and move to Mexico. And, you know, I didn't know he was joking or wasn't serious, but I knew that this had been a congregation where we did feel like we were, you know, that square peg trying to fit into a round hole. And uh -huh. we love the congregation dearly, but we just had to ask God, why are we here? And when he said move to Mexico, I mean, that sounded fantastic. I mean, winter was coming. We're in Iowa. <laughs> and so I'm like, well, let's do it. And so, you know, of course, we talked with our financial person and our kids and all of that and prayed and made sure that was what God intended. It wasn't just a whim. But the doors opened. And a year later, we and all of our possessions were here in Mexico. That's so, awesome. Where are you guys? Where are you? We are about 30 minutes south of Guadalajara and we're in the mountains on Lake Chapala. So it couldn't be a more delightful area and it's our new home. And that's, we're able to, of course, build a business online because, you know, we've got internet. technology. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Actually, I went to Guadalajara. It's got to be like 24. Five years ago when I went to Puerto Vallarta. So oh. yeah, we took like a little day trip to Guadalajara to go to the markets. It was so much fun. We had yeah. a good time. Yep. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. So tell me about your business and, and what you guys do now. Okay. Well, once we got here, we, you'd already been doing some uh, network marketing and we had two blogs at the time. Mm -hmm. And of course, we were beginning to offer some affiliate products via our blogs. Mm -hmm. So we were doing that for a couple of years. I remember a particular night, we had been out at a training event with our mentors. And after things were over, we were back in our hotel room. And I was sharing with them our next 90 day business plan. He turned to me and said, you're ready. You need to be out there coaching others. That's awesome. I certainly didn't feel ready. But Nobody and, does, ever. <laughs> yeah, but no. in retrospect, I realized that, well, I had taken my gifts for strategic planning and the things that I've been doing in my entire career and simply brought them into a new niche. And now it was time to share. And it was working. Yeah. 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 That's the thing. You know, it's really funny. I didn't know before we jumped on this, although I probably should have done a little bit more research that you guys were in network marketing. But remember how I told you I was in Guadalajara and in Puerto Vallarta? My ex-husband was what at that time was called the Hawaiian Blue Diamond, and they ended up being called Team Elite for New Skin. So I was in network marketing with him. I actually, I met him in New Zealand. We came back to America. He took me over to London. We lived in Bangkok, Thailand. And that was all because of that. What so, an adventure. Yeah, yeah. 
that's a small world, isn't it? Oh my goodness. That's yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So now you guys coach people on affiliate marketing, right? Affiliate marketing, and we coach other coaches, especially those that are just getting started in their business. That's awesome. And trying to get that virtual component. You know, maybe they've been yeah. coaching for a while, but they want to expand their reach, but they don't know how to do it online because it's a totally different animal. And it so is. we can apply all of the principles that we've put together and help them succeed. Yeah. That's awesome. So that's actually a really good segue into the whole theme that we're going through when we're interviewing our coaches is... How do you guys get clarity for yourselves? And then how do you help your people get clarity? What is that process that you go through? Right, right. Well, in our own work together, we do a major annual planning at the beginning of each new year. And we talk about every area of our lives and our, our marriage, our ministry, our business, and you know, much as you have on your app, I, we walk through at least 10 different areas of our lives and say, how, how are we doing here? What's going well? What needs some work this next year? And then when once we've got some clarity about where we are, and we've also written out our visions of where we'd like to be, you know, in a few years, then we start talking about, okay, what are our goals for this year? And how can we move in that direction? And we line out our goals and we usually look at them and say, okay, that's a lot to take on. How can we break that down to first, second, third, and fourth quarter of the year? And then once we work out our goals for the year and have them so that they're, they fit all of our criteria, I don't need uh -huh. to go through that with your audience, but once we've got each of our goals specified, then we, we, say, okay, now what are we going to do this quarter? And we break that down to, to week by week. And we have a meeting every Sunday night where we go about, go through, you know, what if we accomplish this last week and where are we going this week? And, you know, when we started doing that together, we were, you know, a little, maybe a little bit intimidated say, well, I didn't manage to, to get everything done that I, we said I was going to do this week. Uh -huh. And we've, but we're gracious with each other and say, well, you know, I fall short on some things too, but look at what you did accomplish. Absolutely. You, gotta you got to focus on that and not, Absolutely. not beat yourself up for what you didn't do. Yeah. yeah. We're our best yeah. encouragers, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You have to be right. You absolutely have to be. And, you know, that's something that I'm thinking about building into the app too is like, so the manifest board will show like five things a day, right? And if mm -hmm. you get those five things done, well, actually for each one that you get done, another one will roll up, right? Mm -hmm. But then it's not overwhelming. You know, you're just focusing on the top five. This is only in the manifest board, which is part of our app that'll come out later. But it's so funny that you're talking about that. And especially going by the week, right? It's like people are talking about agile, right? And mm -hmm. I think that doing it by the week is so helpful because you're just like, you're chunking it down, chunking it down. And I was talking to somebody the other day and he was just like, oh, I've got all of this stuff and it's a huge project and I'm like okay well let's just chunk 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 and and I use the analogy of eating an elephant but I would never want to eat an elephant <laughs> <laughs> but if you did it would be one bite at a time it would be one bite at a time and before you know it there's like a, a section gone and you know that's the thing is that Rather than getting overwhelmed, if you chunk it down, it just makes life so much easier, doesn't it? Yes. And the people that we work with in coaching, there's usually three problems that they come to us with. Either they are missing certain uh, key elements in doing an online business, uh -huh. or they've got them out of order, Yeah, or they are completely overwhelmed with all the stuff they need to do. Mm -hmm. And so they get nothing done. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. That's common. We, 
what we help them to do is to say, okay, here's where you are. Let's start at the beginning and see which pieces you may have missed along the way. And let's work on one piece at a time. You don't need to try to do everything. Exactly. We'll work on one piece at a time. And it's amazing how fast you can progress when you're only doing one thing at a time instead of trying to do everything. Yeah, I, like I, I noticed for myself, I really try not to multitask. Like I try yes. to pick, I'm, I'm working on this one thing and I'm not saying it's easy because <laughs> it's sometimes it's like, you're like, oh, there's something over there. I got to no, no, I'm like, no, I'm fo focusing on this right now. <laughs> That's so true. I am right. so there with you. Right. And there's so many, there's so many things in our lives that seem so urgent. Yeah. And they're not necessarily important, but you just have this feeling, I've got to do this today. <laughs> so this is another thing about the way that I built the app, right? And the algorithm. So for myself, I kind of built it for myself because of That's exactly- That's where all great ideas come from. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's because I get these ideas and, and they come at me hard and fast. So I've got to get them out of my head as fast as possible so that I just don't forget them, right? So I'll like, you know, enter right. them in. And the neat thing is that because it's connected to a vision and then to a goal and then to a project and then to a task, now when I enter things in there, I don't have to think about when I should do that or how important it is because the algorithm just takes care of it because I've already told the algorithm what was important in my life. And so now I just put it in there and then it tells me when I need to do that and how important that is compared to everything else. And so it, it's actually kind of keeps me in track because inevitably, just like you say, when I enter something in there, sometimes it's not really that important to my bigger goals. And it makes it so abundantly clear that that's not really going to get me where I want to go. Mm -hmm. Right. And I can see that now. It's like I, I can visually see, oh, dang, I'm glad I didn't do that then. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. That's great. I've, I've got at any time uh, probably a couple pages of tasks written out that would be good to do. Yeah. And, and the fact is that some of those tasks have been on that list for Ever. a year or more. Because they still haven't risen to the point of being important enough to do that, to do now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's the other thing is that I, one of the reasons that I built it the way that I did is because like a lot of other tools like Podio, sorry, Podio, but what it used to do is shove overdue tasks like up my nose. And I'm like, but there's a reason I didn't do that. It's because it wasn't important enough for me to do at the time. And so mm -hmm. I'm fine with that being overdue. So I actually made inside of entire task when something ends up overdue, it just goes into the backlog and it's fine being in the backlog. And mm -hmm. then I can look in the backlog and I can fish it out if I want to. But a lot of times the stuff that ends up in there is just not that important. Right, right. <laughs> so it's like you can just let it go. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So tell us the next part that I always ask all the coaches is power. And when I say power, I mean like, you know, there are those days when you get up and you start off, everything's ready to go. And then all of a sudden, it's like everything goes wrong. And, and you get in kind of that dark space. And what do you do to help keep you on track with your vision to keep that power up, to keep that willpower going when sometimes, you know, we have bad days? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes when life happens, and <laughs> I may look at my list of well, you, you threw out the number five. I may have five things that I said that I need to get done today or want mm -hmm. to get done or plan to get done today. Mm -hmm. And at that point, when life happens, I'll look at them and say, 
what will what happens if this one doesn't get done today or this one doesn't get done today and i may end up saying you know i really only have one thing that has to be done today i'm going to do that and let the rest go for today yes let and it be go okay with that let it go exactly and i mean i think that you guys will agree with this it's not a you know religious thing but it it's like that just being at peace and letting it go, right? It's like, mm -hmm. okay, well, you know, some days we just got to let it go. <laughs> right, right. And, and sometimes, I mean, I've encountered people that have a really difficult time with that. They, mm -hmm. they can't let go. They do get into that dark spot and they are stuck there. And so the power I offer them then would be accountability is yeah. make sure that they have someone in their community, coach, you know, a business partner, whatever. I've got David. So when I go into one of those dark places, you know, he, he pitches you out. Pull me out. He <laughs> pitches me out. Yeah. But we all need that because mm -hmm. if we can't sit there and just, you know, do it in our own head, the power, we need to call on someone else's power. And Absolutely. Of course, for me, a lot of times that is prayer. So I do bring, you know, my, my faith into it, but that's, you know, accountability is so key. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. And yeah, so sometimes you'll come to me and say, I've got this and this and this and this and this, all that have all have to be done today. And I just don't have, can't do it all. Yeah, and I'm all in a tizzy. <laughs> and, I, and I think, okay, let's write those down. Just one thing at a time. Yeah. yeah. And, and then mind. say, which, and, and if you don't do this, okay, you've got to cook dinner. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll order a pizza. That's done. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, exactly. You have to find ways around it and finding that peace, right? That's, yeah. that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And so let's talk about follow through. Now that you've got that power and you've got that vision, how do you make sure that, like for me, it's kind of like integrity, right? But what is your take on it, of your follow through? What makes you say, I'm doing that and keeps you on task with that, whatever that is? I remember when I was in grad school, and this is a long time ago, and over 40 years ago, but one of my professors came to me and and said about a given project, he said, you know, if I give a project to you, I know it's going to get done. Mm -hmm. Because that's just how you are. When you grab hold of something, you don't let go until it is complete. And I guess I've always been that way. Mm -hmm. Now, at the same time, there's always the possibility of getting to some place and reevaluating and saying this project is not that is no longer as important as it was and having to set something aside. But when we set out our goals, very seldom do we not accomplish the task goals that we and process goals that we lay out for ourselves. We may that's not awesome. hit all the result goals. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing is that, that you if you handle the process, the results take care of themselves, right? That's what we always say in marketing, you know, like when we're doing growth hacking and stuff like that, we can't, or like, for instance, creating a blog, uh, a podcast, right? We mm -hmm. can't control the people who will watch it. All we can do is control the production of it, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So you just, you do the process, you do the process. And it's kind of like, you hear that people say that the, an overnight success and you're like, yeah, it was like 13 years of overnight. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 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 That's awesome. And so like what you were talking about is that you guys, it sounds like you guys are like intrinsically motivated, right? Yes. And then there are some people that are like more extrinsically motivated. What would you say to them? For that outside, you know, that outside whatever, I think and you could use, again, the accountability where mm -hmm. you're having that add a girl or add a boy, you know, from your someone you look up to, yes. you know, the use of the checklist, 
Yeah, I know. I love that myself. I love to make a checklist so that I can check it off. There is nothing have, more satisfying. Have you seen the way that entire task moves when you click that off and it slides out to the right? That just like makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so for me, I know I'm not as intrinsically motivated, but I need those outer things that I can see. So the to-do task, you know, having a little tick marks on my DMO at the end of the day, that motivates me to do better the next day. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. And I think about it like when I was much younger, when we talk about timelines there, but I used to bodybuild, right? And oh. I found it really difficult to sometimes get up in the morning at five in the morning to go to the gym. But what I found was that when I had somebody to let down, I would not let them down. I let myself down, but I wouldn't let them down. Mm -hmm. So that extrinsic thing, right? Factor that kept me like, oh, I don't want to let them down. (laughs) Right, right. Oh my gosh. Well, it has been so fun interviewing you guys today. So tell us for our viewers, what gift, free gift you're going to give to them and how you're going to help them out. Okay. So in uh, the process of marketing online, Mm -hmm. one of the key elements of that is what do you give away in order to draw in uh, and attract prospective clients and customers? Mm -hmm. And we have put together what we call our solution framework, which is an acronym. It uh, stands for eight key elements to Mm -hmm. your giveaway Mm -hmm. that are essential if that is to actually begin a relationship and lead on to the next step rather than just being a a transaction that happens and it's done. Yeah, that's awesome. Right. And we know that People are always wanting more leads and sales and, you know, all that in their business. So what if we could give them the framework to get leads in an effective, an attractive, a professional, and of course, one that works? (laughs) Yes, yes. So that is our gift. It's called the Solution Framework. The Solution Framework. Awesome. I'll make sure that it's posted down below and, you know. If you guys yeah. are looking for help out there, go and grab that because that will definitely help you on your way to getting more leads. We pull it out every time we go up out to revise and update one of our lead magnets because sometimes you forget we miss something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. We can always make it better. You yeah. Know, yeah. Always yeah. Need to be better. Absolutely. And, and I find that if I haven't done one in a long time, you know, I'm mm. like, oh, what did I do there again? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Really appreciate it. And we it's look forward fun. to hearing more from you guys in the future. Thank you for having us. Okay. Bye-bye.